Good good afternoon, uh, one and all. So let us start with uh, the lecture after the IA. So before IA, we had completed up to uh, good afternoon. So before IA, we had completed uh, the first part of the module two. Okay, it was uh, covered up to multicast routing and all. And then there was a lecture that I had uploaded. Uh, it was not very well defined in your syllabus. That is the uh, network layer. What was the functioning of network layer? And then there was a very important question that why TCP is uh, not working properly in case of ad hoc wireless network. So that was a question. It was covered in uh, lecture number 17. Today is lecture number 18. So this is 20th of October. So I'm starting with uh, the very important topics and these are comparatively easy topics. So more difficult things in uh, routing is over. So routing is the main topic in uh, uh, second module. So here, uh, there are mainly three topics we'll be discussing today. Uh, this is actually called TCP protocol. That is uh, transmission control protocol over ad hoc wireless network. And there are mainly six protocols. So these are generally asked for five to 10 marks questions, each of these protocols. So as the topic suggests, it has feedback based TCP. This is the first thing, or this is called as TCPF. Then TCP with explicit link failure notification. So this is called TCP with ELFN. And next is TCP bus. Okay, so there is some buffering kind of a thing which is there in case of TCP bus, buffering solution. So there are two more uh, topics that you can find here in the slide. So these three are today's topic. That's what I have uh, shown it properly. Now there are two more topics. There are two more protocols in TCP. One is called as ad hoc TCP. One is called as split TCP. These two protocols we will see tomorrow. And finally, there is ACTP, which is called Application Controlled Transport Protocol. So these are the six uh, protocols which are related to TCP and routing in uh, ad hoc network. This is actually the second part of your uh, module two. And in uh, this, these five are together. So this five are kind of similar type of uh, protocols. Okay, we will see uh, the first three and uh, some special application controlled transport protocol or ACTP, we will say tomorrow. So if we do this six, this will be the end of our uh, module number two. So we'll try to finish module two by tomorrow. Please, uh, I'm requesting all of you to go through the lecture number 17, which was uploaded. A uh, lot of uh, data, which already you know was given on network layer. What is network layer? What kind of work it does in case of uh, ad hoc wireless sensor network. And uh, one very important question, was there that is why uh, TCP is not implementable directly in case of ad hoc wireless network. So there are some seven, eight points. Uh, you have to write all those points in exam with graphs and with a partitioning diagram there. So that also you can draw. So please check lecture number 17. Though that lecture number 17 is not having any direct bearing on this lecture without, uh, even if you have seen that, then also you can understand these three protocols which we will be discussing today. So mainly we will be discussing three protocols today. One is called as uh, the first one, feedback based TCP, TCPF, then TCP with ELFN and TCP bus. So these three are our topics for today. And all these three topics are having same thing, okay, uh, same type of thing. That is, uh, there will be some nodes. Uh, here you can find there are ABCD nodes. Okay. And this is the first type, TCPF, but in all cases, the diagrams will be similar type. Action taken are also similar type, but they are having different names. That is the only thing. So after I uh, tell you all these three uh, different TCP types, what you have to do is you have to just find a comparison between them and you have to find out what exactly are the difference between all these three. So differences are very minute, but differences you have to find exactly what are the difference between first, second, third type of TCP protocols. Okay. Otherwise, uh, functioning wise, they uh, are quite similar, quite same. Okay. Let us see this. So what is TCPF? So first find what does F stand for? Okay, F stands for feedback. 
So TCP is transport control protocol and uh, F stands for uh, the feedback. Okay, so what is the feedback? How is the feedback generated? I will explain. So those are TCP protocol operation is three stages. So I'm going to show you three diagrams. So you can see there are three diagrams. Okay, stage A, stage B, stage C. So what is the stage A? Stage A is A, B, C, D is properly connected. Okay, so A is the transmitter node or sender node. D is the receiver node. Okay, so this is called TCPF connection from A to D. So A is sending packets and this is called upstream node. B, C, they are called upstream node because it is going toward uh, D. D is the receiver. And whenever you are coming back from D to A, from D to C, if you are coming, C is called downstream node. C to B, if you are coming, B is called downstream node. And B to A, a is the sender. So if you are going from left to right, B and C is called as upstream node. If you are coming from D to A, in that case, C and B are called as downstream node. That means upstream means toward the receiver, downstream means toward the sender. So feedback based TCP or TCP AF is a modified version of traditional TCP. It improves the performance of ad hoc wireless network. How it improves? Let us see. It uses a feedback based approach and replies reliable link layer okay this routing protocol gives feedback signal to tcp sender uh, about the path break so as long as the uh, connection is like this abcd as shown here there is no problem without any problem data uh, is transmitted from the transmitter to receiver so it is said here the setup of tcp session between node a and node d over the path abcd that means a is sensing a lot of uh, events is converting all the sensed events into packets and A is sending all the packets to receiver D. So this routing protocol is expected to repair the broken path. So how the path uh, break suppose between C and D because of some reason this path is broken. Okay, then how uh, the overall network reacts to that path break that is actually the uh, repair mechanism. And depending on repair, repair mechanism and what all happens in the repair mechanism, uh, this uh, three stages are defined. So the routing protocol is expected to repair a broken path. Broken path is A is the transmitter, D is the receiver, A, B, C, D is the uh, B and C are the intermediate nodes, A to D data transmission is taking place, no problem. But sometimes we don't see and D whatever path is there that gets broken because of something because of maybe uh, D has moved out or C has moved out due to mobility and uh, because of that this uh, has become greater than one hop distance and the path has broken between C and D means what whatever packet was transmitted by A that will not reach D okay so in that case there comes a disruption okay but what A thinks A thinks that network is congested because A does not know that uh, path between C and D is broken. What A thinks is, A can only think of one thing. A might think that uh, there is a congestion, huge congestion, that means in node C, a lot of data has been gathered or something, and there is a congestion in the path A, B, C, D. That's why whatever packet it is forwarding, it is not going uh, to the uh, receiver D. How A knows that uh, packets are not going to receiver D? Because upon receiving the packet sent by A, D will send back an acknowledgement and that acknowledgement will come back to A. So A will send the packet, transmit the packet for a long time, A is waiting, but there has not come any acknowledgement from D. That means A understands that the packets have not reached to the destination D and the only one reason A can think is congestion. So what A thinks is somewhere uh, some congestion has happened and hence the data is not getting forwarded to D. But it does not know that between C and D the path is broken. How that broken path is repaired and what all thing happens during that broken path that actually is explained in next diagram which is called as state B. So figure A the setup of TCP connection between node A and D over the path ABCD. During the TCP session several path break results huge packet loss and path re-establishment delay. So whenever the path is broken, it has to be re-established for that some time is given. Okay, in that time, no transmission, further transmission is taking place from A. Because A understands that no acknowledgement has come from D to A. That means packet, whatever was transmitted previously from A, has not reached the destination D. If the previously sent packet has not 
received by uh, destination D, then there is no point sending more packet. Hence, the A will stop its transmission. Okay, but A is continuously sensing data, and A is not transmitting it. So what happens? All the data are stored at A, and all the data are get, getting lost over a certain time. That is what it is saying. Several path breaks. So here only one link I have shown. There may be many link in a network. It can be a multi-path, uh, multi-cast kind of solution, or multi-path, multi-cast kind of network. So there may be many path. There may be many path break. For every path break, there will be a lot of packet loss. So hence, uh, this TCP session, a huge amount of uh, packet loss occurs. That is what I say. Upon detecting the packet loss, now let us see what happens when there is a breakage in the path. So upon detecting the packet loss, sender in TCP session initiates a congestion control algorithm, leading to the exponential back of RTO timer and discrete-in congestion window sign. That means it was explained in the in in case of hidden terminal problem that whenever the packets are not going forward, there is a reverse. Uh, there is a RTO. That means it it will be waiting for a uh, so it's a reserved time window. So for certain time, this A is going to wait. So as long as it is not getting any acknowledgement from D, A understands that network has become congested. That means it will produce a RTO. That means it will be waiting for certain time. So this is the timeout uh, time. So it will be waiting for certain time, and after that again, A will try that whether the path is uh, become proper or not. If the path has become proper, then only it will send its information further. So, uh, congestion control algorithm will lead to the exponential back off RTO timer and decrease in congestion window size. Let us see uh, what is FP and what is RFN. So, these two are the features. What do I mean by FP? FP means by failure point. So, data is coming from A to D via B and C. B and C are upstream node. Something has happened that the link between C and D has broken. So, when the intermediate link between node C and D fails. Why it is fails because of maybe uh, mobility of C or D something, but C and D connection is broken. Node C is now called as FP or failure point. As soon as node C finds that this link is broken, what node C will do is it will generate a reverse signal which is called as RFN. What is RFN? It is given here a route failure notification. So as soon as C finds that it cannot forward the packets to D. C will generate a RFN, that is route failure notification, which is routed back to the sender of the TCP session and which is nothing but A. That is C will tell the sender A that it is not because of congestion, but the path between C and D is broken. That's why your packet sent from A is not getting forwarded to the node D. So an intermediate node C detects a path break Okay, TCPF and it originates a signal packet called as RFN. So this is a overhead. Okay, so RFN is a overhead packet, and this is a notification packet. Okay, so RFN RFN is routed back to the sender of TCP session of node A. The TCP sender's information is expected to be obtained from the TCP packets being forwarded by the node. How C knows that it has to send the information back to A? Because whatever packet A had sent inside that packet, the information of sender was embedded. That is what sent here. The TCP sender's information, that means information of A, is expected to be obtained from TCP packets. So whatever data packet C is receiving inside that, it is said that A is the sender. Hence, whenever C finds a path break, C sends back a route failure notification to the Actual sender or A node. So expected to be obtained from TCP packets being forwarded by the node. The intermediate node C, which is a failure point or FP, generates RFN packet. So RFN packet is shown here. Node C is called as failure point FP. It maintains all information about the RFNs it has generated. So C will keep track of the node failure. How long the node is failure? What is the chance that the node will come up? When the node will get repaired, all these informations C will keep, and time to time C will keep on telling that information to A through the RFN, that is the route failure notification. As soon as A finds that there has come a 
back packet or feedback packet from the failure point to itself okay then a does not transmit any more packet because a finds that already its previous packet is not reaching to the destination hence there is no point wasting energy hence there is no point transmitting so this is the main <coughs> understanding of this protocol that once the previous path is broken don't try any more transmission that is a very important thing so fp node that is c that nodes about the route failure forwards rfn in the back side update its routing table accordingly what is the routing table a to d routing table will be having all the addresses of intermediate b c and d nodes and everything but now the link between c and d is broken so now the routing table will be only from a to c so in the table of c there will be no mention of d okay because c will be updating its routing information very fast so fp nodes or c node knows about the route failure and hence it forwards the rfn towards the source a c update its route table accordingly that means it cuts all the d related links from the observation table or routing table and avoids forwarding any more packet on the route so c whatever packet from a it had received it is not going to transmit all those packets to d it will not even try because c d link is broken so this is the second stage first stage was a b c d is uh, connected so there is no problem so this is the name of the state a b c d is connected tcpf connected from a to d there is a second state called second state is called as tcp state snooze snooze means in this state the tcp is not attempting any information transfer from c to d so c node is kind of a slipping node here that's why it is called tcp state snooze that means in this case no packet transmission is taking place and the whole network would try in this snooze state to repair the link between c to d so after snooze state comes the repair state so first is the initial state connected state something happened between c and d so the path got broken c is having all the information c is keeping all the packets of a and the whole network goes into snooze state so and avoids forwarding any more packets on the route so as c is not forwarding anything this state is called as snooze state so this is figure b when the intermediate link between c and d fails c originates rfn packet toward the reverse path to the source node send the tcp state is changed to snooze state upon receipt of the rfn packet what is snooze state we will find here if an intermediate node that receives rfn has an alternate route to the same destination that is here the link was failed c is sending back to b b is sending back to a but d might find another route maybe through node e f to d so in that case a b e f d might be another route so that is what is said here if an intermediate node that receives the rfn so b is receiving the RM, rfn and b is an intermediate node if b receives rfn and b has a alternate route to the same destination b d in that case then it discards the rfn packet and uses the alternate path for forwarding the further data packet so to send the rfn packet c has to send the rfn packet first to b and b sends it to a but b will not always send the rfn to a because b might find an alternate path e and f and through that that ef a and f the a data will be forwarded to d that is what is said here that b discards the rfn packet and uses the alternate path for forwarding the further data packet to the previous destination so this is a special case it reduces control overhead because once b is forwarding it to uh, rfn packet this is not rfn huh? this is rrn this is something different i am still in the previous thing so c has sent it to b b is having a different alternate packet so b might be forwarding the a information through that alternate packet to d so this is another case where control overhead is reduced because here c to b is a rfn b to a is another rfn but if b is finding alternate path in that case this rfn is saved okay and in a very big network if you can save one 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 rfn every stage that becomes a very big saving so that is what is sent here so if an intermediate path b receives rfn and b has alternate path route 
for the same destination D. Then the B discards the RFM packet from C and uses the alternate path for forwarding the data packet to the destination. It reduces the overhead uh, involved in the control packet sending. Else RFN is forwarded towards a source code. So if B does not have an alternate path, then B will do what? It will send the RFN packet to A. So there are two possibilities when RFN, RFN packet is sent from C to uh, towards A. First possibility, C will send it to B. B will check whether it's an alternate. B is having whether will check whether it's having an alternate path or not. If B is having alternate path, the A information which had already previously come to B, that information will be routed from B to D. This is one uh, solution. But if B does not have an alternate path, in that case, B will do what? B will forward this RFN packet to A. And A will come to know that the path between C and D is broken. So very important thing that these two things are explained here. Okay. Else RFN is forwarded to, to, towards the source node. TCP sender, TCP sender means A, upon receiving the RFN packet here, goes into snow state to it previously. Uh, now the sender stops sending any more packet to the destination. So previous state when it went into snow state, it will not be transmitting any more information to the uh, destination. And since all timer freezes its congestion window, freezes transmission timer and set up a route failure timer. What is meant by route failure timer? That is, that is the time for which the route is inactive. That is the time for which A is not going to send any information to D. That is actually a route failure uh, timer. So these two actually are related to the previous or B state, which is called as TCP state snooze. Route failure timer is dependent on routing protocol, network size, and network dynamics. It is to be taken as the worst case route configuration time. That means what can be the maximum time between source to the destination when the route is failed. Okay, now the route failure timer expires and TCP sender changes from snow state to the connected state. So after that, what happens is after the snow state, uh, the repair process keeps on starting. So here it is said, when the link CD rejoins, okay, so now previously C had gone outside due to mobility. Now again, C has come back. When C has come back, CD link is again re-established. But A does not know that CD link is re-established. That process again has to be restarted by C. So previously FP node, failure node, uh, uh, this FP node, failure point C, it had generated RFN telling A that uh, there is no path between C and D. <clears throat> now when the link is repaired, this RRN, what is the RRN? It is called uh, uh, repair notice. So previously R was route failure notification. Now RRN is a route repair notification. Okay, so this RRN actually is the connectivity between C and D. So when the link CD rejoins, or if any of the intermediate node obtains a path, to the destination D. So when B finds an alternate path to D in that case also, or when C D joins in that case also, route reestablishment notification or route repair notification is generated towards A. Okay. So when A receives it, this RRN route reestablishment or route repair notification, then A again starts sending packet over A B C D or if it is a reroute, then it will be from A, B, E, F, and D. So this is the third stage that when link CD rejoins or B finds a alternate path up to D, then the C node, if it is CD linked, then C node will generate the RRN. If B is re-establishing the path, then B node will generate the RRN. And all these RRN signals will be sent back to the sender A. So that A will come to know that, yes, now the path is again repaired. Now I can start sending packet. So from A, the path will go, uh, the data will go from A, B, C, D up to D. Or if there is a reroute path, it will go from A, B, E, F up to D. Okay, This is uh, what is called as feedback-based TCP. So who are the feedback signals? RFN was the feedback signal for node failure. RRN is the feedback signal for node failure or a route re-establishment. So when a route was failed, it was RFN feedback. When the route is re-established or repaired, 
then it is feedback is given by RRM. So that's why it is called as feedback based TCP. What are the advantages? Here, this TCP provides a simple feedback based solution to minimize the problems arriving in frequent path break in ad hoc network. It also uh, permits the TCP congestion control mechanism to respond to congestion in the network. So whenever the path break, A cannot understand that CD link has broken, that's why data is not reaching to D. But A sender thinks is there is a congestion in the network. Okay, so there is a misunderstanding. We have seen it in the previous uh, lectures that always A misunderstands uh, link failure as a congestion. Okay, so this feedback based TCP avoids that congestion mechanism in the network. TCPF depends on intermediate nodes ability to detect the route failure. So there is a C node FP and rerouting uh, for data transmission between transmitter to the receiver. And the routing protocol's capability to re-establish a broken path within a reasonably short duration. So that RRN uh, timing for RRN should be as small as possible. Very fast, the network by self-healing approach should be able to re-establish the link between the C and D nodes or between B, E, F and D path. Okay, if it is rerouting or if it is node repairment, all the things should come, uh, all the things should happen very fast. Failure point C should be able to obtain the correct path. Okay, the path with a, a packet traverse to the TCPF sender for sending the RFN packet. Okay, so C wants to send back the RFN packet to the sender. So in this case, it is happening through B and then it is going to A. But every time it will happen like this. So this link is gone. Maybe then this link is also gone. So in that case, C has to find another path through which C can send the RFN signal to A. That is, there is a breakage in the path. You please stop transmitting any new packet. It's always very important. The failure point should be able to obtain the correct path to send the TCPF sender the RFN packet. RFN packet means it is a failure notice. As soon as the failure notice reaches the sender, sender stops all kind of further transmission because the path is broken. There is no point. Previous messages has not received the receiver. So why transmit anything new? Okay. So this is simple with a routing protocol that uses dynamic source routing. So this can be asked as a short question. What is meant by dynamic source routing? So this, whatever process is explained, this is also, also called as dynamic source routing. What are the limitations? If a route to the sender node is not available at the FP, then additional control packet may need to be generated for routing RFN packet. It uses some uh, of the other bandwidth. What is meant by that? Suppose initially the CD link got broken and afterwards BC link got broken. In that case, C and A, this is uh, the source of RFN path C, A is the destination path for RFN path. Okay, but B, C link is broken, C, D link is broken. In that case, C has to establish some other nodes, some other uh, path to A. And if C wants to establish contact with other nodes and send the RFN signal to A, in that case, C has to exchange RTS, CTS, or all those <coughs> intermediate packets with the intermediate nodes. And that will be actually eating a lot of uh, bandwidth. So if a route to the sender is not available at the FP, then additional control packets need to be generated or exchanged for routing the RFN packet. So from C to A it is, because RFN packet goes from C to A and data goes from A to D. It uses some of the scarce bandwidth. So bandwidth already is less and for sending RFN packet, again C has to waste some more bandwidth. So that is a limitation. TCPF has an additional state compared to the traditional TCP state machine. So this RFN is an additional state. So this is an increment in the uh, another state and that will make the process little uh, delayed. Okay, hence its implementation requires modification to the existing TCP library. So exactly in TCP library, there is no RFN. So RFN is happening only in case of feedback based TCP. Okay. So what they're saying is modification is required in the uh, TCP uh, stack so that this intermediate stage RFN can be accommodated. So this is actually uh, increasing the delay of the whole process, RFN. 
Congestion window used after a new route is obtained may not reflect the actual transmission rate acceptable to the network and the TCP receiver. What it means is just after uh, the node is repaired in this case. Okay. So the C previously it had sent RFN. Now it is sending RRN. Upon receiving the RRN, A now starts transmitting uh, the uh, packet towards D. But initially, as it has uh, it has generated a lot of RTO and all those things, reverse timer. Initially, it will not start transmitting with huge uh, data rate. So A will start increasing its data transmission rate in steps. So that is what it is saying. Congestion window used after the new route is obtained. That means route repair has occurred. Now A has again started uh, sending the data packet slowly. In this case, the achievable transmission rate acceptable to the network, it will not be very fast. So in this case, very fast, the A will not uh, transmit with full capacity. So A will take some time to come to the full data rate capacity. So these are the advantages and these are the limitations of the feedback based TCP. To go for, uh, this is only a one page protocol. Okay, what I have given, it is uh, generated by Holland and Vaidya. They had proposed another uh, TCP protocol for the same kind of thing. That is ABCD is having a data link. A is the transmitter, D is the receiver, and then there is a path break. So if there is a path break, previous case it was generating RFN first from the failure point to the transmitter, and then it was waiting when the path is getting repaired, or if there is some other path that is another reroute path. In this case, instead of RFN, what signal it is sending back is PLFN. What is that? Explicit link failure notification. So the failure point in case of this second protocol, instead of sending RFN, it is sending back a signal called as explicit link failure notification or ELFN. Check. Holland and Vaidya proposed TCP with ELFN for improving the TCP performance. That is what we are trying to implement is TCP protocol over ad hoc wireless network. In this case, uh, explicit link failure notification will be provided or generated by the failure point. It is same as TCPF. I told you it is same as TCPF except explicit link failure notification. So in this case, the signal is new. Previous case, it was called as RFN. In this case, it is called as ELFN. Process is same diagram, same diagram you can draw. Only in case of RFN, you have to say it is ELFN. And in this case, TCP probe packet is detected for route re-establishment. So this is a new thing. So there are two new things compared to TCP F bus in this TCP with ELFN. First change is RFN is not there in this protocol. In this protocol, the same signal is sent back and that signal is instead of RFN, we are calling it ELFN. And next there is a TCP probe packet. What is a TCP probe packet? Let's check here. So instead of RFN, now it will be sending ELFN. So C and D path is broken. ABCD was the actual path. C and D path is broken. Now C will send back ELFN signal towards the A. And after receiving that, A will understand that CD path is broken because ELFN signal has come to A from source C. Whatever ELFN signal C is sending back, in that ELFN signal, uh, the ID of C node is embedded. So A will understand that the data is getting forwarded up to C and from C upstream, from C toward the destination, the path is broken. Okay, so data is going up to C properly, but C onward, the path is broken. That A understands. Then what A does is, it is sending some probe packet. What is meant by probing? Probing means uh, inserting something in the uh, line or in the channel. So A is going to send some probe packet and A will check whether that probe packet, so those are test signals. Probe packet means they are kind of a test signals. They are sent from A to D. If they reach D, then A understands that yes, the path is re-established. How A will come to know that that probe packet has reached D? As soon as D is receiving the probe packet, D will send back a acknowledgement signal. This you have to remember. Whenever data transmission is complete, the receiver sends back an acknowledgement signal and it comes back to the source who had sent the packet. 
So what is probe packet? Probe packet is a test packet which is transmitted by A. So A as soon as received ELFN, that means path is broken, link is failure, it has come from C. As soon as this ELFN signal is received at A, what A will do is A will wait for some time and then A will slowly keep on checking whether the path is repaired or not. How will A check that? A will keep on sending some probe packet, TCP probe packets. Okay, so they are kind of a testing signals. If they reach D, then D will give an acknowledgement, it will come to A and A will come that yes, path is re-established. So there is no RRN signal here. Previously, RRN signal uh, route re-establishment, previously that signal was telling that yes, path is re-established. Now, the path re-establishment is checked by A itself by sending probe packet. So, this is the difference between uh, TCPF and TCP ELFN. First difference is in TCPF there is RFN, in TCP ELFN there is ELFN signal. Second thing is there is a RRN signal in uh, TCP bus that is when the route is re-established uh, from the failure point RRN will packet will come back to the sender in this case there is no RRN in this case the A itself keep on sending packets TCP packets so TCP probe packets this is the difference and if TCP probe packet reaches a destination then the sender will know that yes the route is re-established so ELFN is originated by the node that detects a path break same as FP or C node. Upon detection of a link failure, uh, it, uh, ELFN uh, signal is sent back to the sender. This can be implemented in two ways, by sending a destination unreachable message to the sender. So either uh, DUR signal also is another thing. DUR is a destination unreachable. Who sends that? C or failure point sends a DUR signal back to the uh, sender. So DUR stands for destination unreachable. It is same as RFL. Okay, so different protocols call the same thing differently. So previously what RFN was saying that route failure, in this case it is called as DUR, that is destination unreachable. Okay, so that signal will be sent by the failure point to the sender. So this is one way. Second is by piggybacking this information on the route error three message that is sent to the sender. That means slowly one node to the another, one node to the another, the same information will be sent back to the receiver. So first is DUR, that is destination unreachable, either a special message of DUR you send back to the sender or you can send ELFN piggybacking. Okay, slowly you can send it to the receiver. So DUR or ELFN. In these two ways, you can inform the sender that uh, the path is broken. Once the TCP sender receives the ELFN information, it disables its retransmission trimer and enters a standby state. Retransmission happens when the path is there, but for some reason, uh, the initial packet sent did not reach the receiver. Then the transmitter will resend the packet. Okay, so there is a timer for that. After how much time you can resend. But in this case, as soon as ELFN packet is received by the sender, the sender understands that path is broken. So there is no point retransmitting. If the previous packet did not reach receiver, retransmission also will not help because the path is broken. So upon receiving the ELFN intimation packet, the transmitter, it means the transmitter disables its retransmission timer and enters a standby state. In this state, it periodically, so that was a slow state in the previous case. In this state, it periodically generates probe packet. So in the slow state previous case, it was not transmitting anything. It was just waiting for RRN signal. When C or failure point will send me a RRN signal. So RRN signal was the indication that path is repaired. In this case, the sender does not sit idle. That is the difference between TCPF and TCP ELFN. So in the TCPF, after receiving RFN, the sender is silent. It goes into snow state. In TCP ELFN, after receiving the ELFN signal, the transmitter keeps on sending the uh, probe packets. Okay. So when TCP receiver receives acknowledgement for the probe packets, it comes out of the standby node. Then it restores the transmission timer and continues to the function as normal. So when the TCP receivers receive this uh, probe packet, then what will happen is 
uh, so actually probe packet does not go up to the receiver probe packet goes up to the uh, c node and c node actually acknowledges reception of probe packet and that acknowledgement actually goes to the destination also so when the tcp receiver receives the acknowledgement packet which is sent by the failure node fp failure point then the probe packets it come out of the standby state and then it restores the retransmission and continues the uh, general or normal operation what are the advantages so tcp elf and improves the tcp performance by decoupling the path break <coughs> from the congestion information by the elfn so path broken and congestion information these two things are different these are separated in case of elfn it is less dependent on the routing protocol and requires only link failure notification about the path break so a has to received transmitter has to received only the link failure information then it will send a, uh, a probe packet the probe packet received by the c node or failure node and uh, when it is received by the c node then it will generate a acknowledgement packet and after the path repairment only it will generate a acknowledgement packet and when acknowledgement packet is received by everybody the path is repaired and uh, again again another transmission keeps on going so what are the disadvantages so this is a diagram i had shown last day check this is a tcp sender and this is a tcp receiver this is one pair blue node and yellow is a sender and this another yellow is a receiver so there are actually two paths within the region what happens maybe this node or this receiver goes away so it goes in such a, a far distance that a cannot this sender cannot receive cannot send the data to this receiver what happens in that case there comes a breakage or this is called as uh, <clears throat> the two uh, region so this is called segregation or segmentation of the whole uh, network so due to the mobility of this b <clears throat> what happens is the whole uh, the area actually they become partitioned or segmented okay in that case a cannot transmit to b because they have become to partition zone okay and this transmit b transmitter cannot uh, transmit to the b receiver like this so this is called segmentation and this because of segmentation <coughs> the cd link breakage whatever was being explained in this case cd link is breakage because of mobility of the receiver node exactly the same thing happens here so this is the d part and this may be the c part okay so from c to d initially there was a link like this so this is c node and this is d node from c to d there was a link but as d node is moving away or maybe c node is moving in the other direction what happens is partition is created between the sender and the receiver okay so this is the partitioning process which was explained in the previous lecture what are the limitations of elfn explicit link failure first is when the network is temporarily temporarily partitioned so this partition temporarily partitioned why because again if d node keeps on coming towards bottom again this two segments will get joined and again the overall network repair will happen so this d node goes away partitioning occurs if d node comes below then rejoining occurs so when the network is temporarily partitioned like this figure in the right side the path failure may last longer and this can lead to origination of periodic probe packets consuming bandwidth and power so in this case whenever the d node has gone far in that case there will occur a partition and partition occurring means even if this a node or a node b node they are below they are sending some probe packet but this probe packet will not reach to the destination d but to transmit probe packet there is required bandwidth there is required power so that is what it is saying when the network is temporarily partitioned like this there is no connection between c and d the path failure may last longer because partitioning to rejoin the partitioning it takes quite a longer time in that case it leads to origination of periodic probe packets so a will keep on transmitting probe packet just to check whether a b c d link is connected or not it consumes a lot of bandwidth and power and that is all waste because the node is or the area is partitioned that means after c the probe packet will not go to d and that probe packets will get lost in c but a does not uh, remain silent a keeps on sending the probe packet just to check if it is reaching d so instead of sending data packet because 
uh, if it is A sending data packet, then data will get lost. So instead of sending data packet, A is sending a probe packet and just checking whether ABCD link is repaired or not. Okay. So a very important point that after the path failure or network partition, whatever probe packet A is sending uh, periodically, that is actually eating up a lot of bandwidth and power. Congestion window used after a route, a uh, new route is obtained may not reflect the uh, achievable. Okay, so the congestion window uh, used after a new route is obtained may not reflect the achievable uh, data rate. So the same thing, just after the route is rejoined, in that case, immediately the A node will not transmit its full data rate capacity. So it will slowly uh, increase its data rate because just once it is rejoined, there may be another occasion that uh, again partition might happen. Again, there may be a CD link failure. So A takes some time. Okay, and after that time, if it is fine that yes, partition is not there, CD link is still intact, then slowly the sender will up its uh, data transmission rate. That is what is said. After condition window is closed, then to increase the data rate, it takes some time. Okay, so this is uh, ELFN, that is TCP with ELFN. Main, there are two differences in case of TCP bus or TCP feedback. There was uh, RFN signal in case of TCP ELFN. There is uh, the signal which is called as ELFN. And in case of uh, uh, feedback thing, there was the RRN packet just going from failure point to the transmitter. In case of ELFN, there is produced a uh, packet like this, which is transmitted by the sender itself and which periodically checks if ABCD link is re-established or not. All of this page we will do, we will not be able to finish TCP bus, but at least we will know what is TCP bus. Okay, so it's some uh, diagram is there, we can do it tomorrow. Right now let us see what is TCP bus. This bus, BUS, okay, so BUS is actually buffering and sequence, okay, so TCP, we know what is TCP, with buffering capability and sequencing is similar to TCPF and TCP ELFN, so whatever we have done in TCPF and TCP ELFN, that is explicit link failure, same thing is done here, but in this case, there is a buffering capability, buffering means storage and sequencing, so there is an added uh, feature in case of the TCPF and TCP ELFN, which is making TCP bus a very special uh, kind of a protocol. Okay, so TCP with buffering and sequence is similar to TCPF and TCP ELFN in its use of feedback information from an intermediate node on detection of a path break. So C node is the upstream node, which is intermediate node, which is finding that between C to D, the connection is broken. Either it will send back some signal, that signal is called different here. So, in the first case it was called RFN, second case the feedback was called ELFN. In this case, it is something else. Let us find. TCP bus is more dependent on the routing protocol compared to TCP F and TCP ELFN. TCP bus uses an associative based routing. Associative based routing means altogether, sub node milke route karte. Okay, so it uses a ABR or associativity based routing protocol as the routing scheme. It uses some special messages like localized query. So LQ and reply. So between the failure point and other nodes surrounding the failure point, there will be information exchange. And before information exchange, there will be localized query and reply for finding a partial path. So I told you previously that ABCD is initially the uh, path, uh, CD link is broken, like here, CD link is broken. Now C sends back RFN. What can happen? Two things. First, B will find a reroute through EF and B will reroute to D with EF. So this is what mainly is happening in case of TCB bus. So this is called ABR, associativity based routing. So even if the path CD is broken, this RFN signal comes back to B and B will associate with the other nodes surrounding to C and B will try to find out if there is an alternate path. So TCP bus uses associativity based routing protocol as a routing scheme. It uses some special messages of LQ and reply for finding a partial path, partial path between B to D. These messages are modified to carry out 
TCP connection and segment information. So B or C will also try to find if there is some alternate path up to D. Upon detection of a path break, so this is the failure point C. C is detecting there is a path break. An upstream intermediate node or pivot node. So B and C, they are called upstream node because they are taking the data from A to D. Okay. So upon detecting of a path break, an upstream node, that is B or C, so C in this case, it generates an explicit route disconnection notification. So first case, it was RFN. Second case, it was ELFN. In this case, it is called as explicit route disconnection notification. Same thing. RFN, ELFN, and ERDN, both are same thing. It will be sent back to the transmitter or sender, and it will tell the sender that the path is broken. So upon detection of a path break, the node C or pivot node generates a ERDN, explicit route disconnection notification message. This ERDN packet is propagated to the TCP bus sender, again the back path. Upon reception of this, the TCP bus sender transmits uh, freezes all transmission, freezes all timers, freezes all windows for TCPF. So the same thing which has, been, which has been happening in the previous cases. First case it was RFN, second case it is ELFN, third case it is ERDN. This is sent back from the pivot node that is failure point to the sender or transmitter. Upon receiving this, all kind of transmission, all kinds of uh, uh, timers in the sender is freezed. Nothing happened. It goes into smooth state. The packets from TCP bus sender to the pivot node. So previously data packet was transmitted from A to C. The packets, these packets in transmitted node and in intermediate nodes are buffered. So here this paragraph is very important. So previous case, as soon as there was a link failure, all the data packet that was coming towards C node was getting lost. In this case, as this is buffering capability and sequence, what happens is all the transmitted packet from A to C intermediate nodes are buffered and stored in site. So wherever the packets are present, either in B node or C node, every node is having a buffering or storing capacity. Everywhere, all those packets are stored until a new partial path or PN to the TCP bus receiver is found by the PN. So as long as the C node or failure point is not establishing a path or reconnection up to the D or receiver, till that time, all the intermediate data are getting stored in C2. That is wherever it is, there the data is getting stored. So this is the very important distinguishing point. Okay, what is saying that the intermediate nodes unbuffered stored inside until a new partial path from the pivot node C up to the receiver is found by the PN. In order to avoid unnecessary retransmission, the timers for the buffer packet are of the sender are sent to the uh, timer. So RTT, round trip time. So TCP bus sender and the intermediate nodes up to pivot node use time out values proportional to round trip time. That means this is informed to the sender that wherever data is there, that data are stored. You do not retransmit that. This data is existing on the route path. As soon as the route is re-established or reconnected, all these data packets will be sequentially going from those uh, buffered position up to the receiver position. So what I ask you to do is every uh, protocol is having a little difference from the previous one. So this third protocol TCP bus is having the data storage capacity and it is having the capacity of uh, localized query and reply. That means the failure node will be sending LQ, the failure node will be receiving reply and it will establish some arbitrary path or reroute path with the destination D. So this LQ and reply is one advancement in this protocol. This uh, buffering sequence is another advancement in this protocol and the data is getting stored. Instead of getting lost, they are getting stored in C2 and whenever the rejoining occurs, this data is sequentially transmitted to the receiver. One more paragraph and we will stop. The intermediate nodes between TCP bus sender and the PN can request the TCP bus sender to selectively transmit any one of those lost packets. So some packet loss might occur. Okay. So the pivot node might request the sender that, okay, 
not all but just send one or two intermediate lost packets so the intermediate nodes between tcp bus sender and the pn can request the tcp bus sender that is a node to selectively transmit any of the lost packets so if one or two packets in between have got lost uh, sender will send it again but sender will not send all the packets retransmission for all packets does not occur upon detection of a path break the downstream node originates a route notification so b is the uh, downstream node for a to the tcp bus receiver which is forwarded to all the downstream nodes in the path so if there is a path break uh, the another node b node or c node they will produce a uh, route notification and that will be flooded that will be flooded in the every direction and all the surrounded nodes will come to know that yes cd path is broken so do not do any kind of transmission involving cd path so this is what is said in the third paragraph so differences in this case is localized query reply difference in this case is bus so there is a buffering capacity data is getting stored in intermediate nodes difference in this protocol is generation of a route notification which is telling about the route failure to all the surrounding nodes okay there are some more details we will be seeing it in the next day so we are we have done the introduction of the tcp bus The remaining things of the TCB bus we will do tomorrow. Thank you. That's all.